Hey, 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 it's Martha here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My topic for today's video is marriage as God intended. What I mean by this is based on my own personal understanding of marriage according to the Bible and as well as my own personal experiences on what works and what doesn't work. So throughout this video, keep in mind, I'm not claiming to be a marriage expert. This is my opinion on experience. So we are discussing on how to have a successful marriage. A successful marriage is a result of applying knowledge and understanding. Like the Bible says in Mark 10 verse 7, For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother, and he shall be joined with his wife. So the problem we are having a lot of people nowadays in marriages is the reasons we are getting married. So I believe this is going to help, be it one person or few on deciding on the reasons of getting married getting married the problem that a lot of people are doing nowadays they're getting married for different reasons for social media so that I can show um, pictures of me and my husband and some people are getting married for just because then I'll have somebody to cook for me then I have somebody a man looking after me working making money and looking after me if the reasons are wrong the whole marriage is wrong so before deciding to get married ask yourself why why do i want to get married why would i want to live with another person for the rest of my life or well, i think that's what you'll be thinking you want to live with somebody for the rest of your life they will be the last person you look at before you go to sleep and the first person you look at when you wake up in the morning. Are you ready to commit into something like that? So from my own experience, like I said, there are a few things that I believe if we, if we bring these things into our marriage, into our lives, and we believe them, I believe we will have a successful marriage. However, when you hear the word successful marriage, it does not mean it's a marriage without problems. Far from it. The truth is, it means it's a marriage that regardless of the problems, the marriage stands. It can stand the test of time. It can stand the storms. It can stand everything that comes against it, which means all the things that come against it, finances, bereavement, loss, um, challenges, children um, problems, children who are going through a lot of things and you can stand it and fight and deal with every problem that comes to you as a couple, as one. One of the things that disturbs or makes marriages unstable is when there's a problem, when a problem comes into the house, into the home, the woman or the man thinks it's my other half that is attacking me. Once you realize that you are fighting whatever problem it is together as one, you have already won. But the problem is most of us think I'm attacking or he's attacking me. So now I'm defending myself. For example, if you have a fight, the two of you, and you are fighting and your aim is to prove him or to prove her that you are right, you've already lost. Because it's not just about proving about something. If it's, if it's something about finding out the truth, that's fine. But if it's something that you want to prove just the other person is wrong, you've already lost because you are not supposed to be fighting against that person you are supposed to be fighting w against whatever problem it is with that person with you as one 
you are a team. So I've got few things, tip, or I'll, I'll call them tips, that I think will help for those who are going to apply them. They're not in any particular order. I've just put them together. One, be ready to face the challenges of change in life. So you've met this man, this woman, and you've decided you are going to be joined together as one. As the Bible says, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Which means you are joined together, you are going to face challenges together. And these challenges, I'm going to just list them one by one. There's more challenges, but I'm just going to mention just a few, for, just for the sake of examples. So you should be ready to face challenges of change. What changes are they? When you're in your parents' home, the way you lived your life and the way you're going to live your life when you are with your other half, your husband or your wife, there are changes that are going to have to take place. There are sacrifices that are going to have to take place. But if you're going to go into a marriage thinking, I like my things this way, and that's how they're going to be. Unfortunately, that marriage is already crumbled before it even starts. Go in that marriage, be ready to face the changes that you, you're going to have to change. You're going to have to, for example, if you're planning to have children, you're going to have to change because if you're going to have children, it means loads of changes in your own body, loads of changes in you in the way you you see life, in the way you um, look up to yourself, you look after yourself, because the fact that you are going to have children, everything's going to change. Your life is going to have to focus on that child when you're having children, and you're going to have to be number two because that child is going to be the center of you, of your everyday life when you're doing everything. So which means all the plans that you're going to be doing in life, you can't just decide, I've decided I'm going to on holiday or I'm going to do this, I'm going to take this job. It means there are going to be sacrifices that are going to have to be made. There are jobs that you're going to have to struggle to take when you've got children. There are things that you're going to have to put on hold because of children responsibilities they're going to have to change when before you get married you you are responsible for yourself you're just making sure i've got clothes i've got the roof over my head i've got food on my table which means you're cooking you're making food for just maybe one person or maybe you're just having food that was being made in your own home with your parents and then now you're going to have to know that when it comes to food we are preparing food for us you and your husband probably with children or someone else. So with these changes, which means, like I said, you're going to have to accept that there are few things that you, you will have to change yourself. I know we'll hear a lot of people say, if you're going to have to change yourself for your partner, then, then that's not it. Then that's not a marriage. I'm not talking about changing for the things that you believe in, the things that you value and all that. No, no, no. no. But be ready that there's going to be changes in, in how you live your life. There are going to be few changes you're going to have to put up. If you're somebody who is just, or, you, or you, you're thinking your life is just you and your husband, you're going to have to learn that your husband is coming with family, which means you're going to have new relatives, which are family, and you're going to have to, you're going to have to learn to treat those people, your husband's family or your wife's family, as your own family. Those are changes that you're going to have to teach yourself to take at the same time don't try to change your partner people we have seen people marrying people and literally thinking they're going to change the other person i don't like the way she dresses i don't like her body i don't like um everything about her is nice but i don't like her hair i don't like how she carries herself and all that but anyway once we get married i'll, I'll change her unfortunately if that's what you're doing at the beginning of the marriage, that marriage already has crumbled. This is the problem because don't marry. Only God can change a person. 
you cannot change a person no matter how much you try no matter how good you think you are unless you're a psychologist then maybe like um a therapist or somebody that you're gonna have to change the person but even therapists don't change people they just help people so you're not their psychologist you're not going to change that person you will have to love whatever it is you will have to love and accept them the way they are because for a start You've got into, you've decided, like I said, what are your reasons for getting married? Have they ticked all your boxes? Let's, let's admit, all of us, we are with people that they probably ticked 10 boxes out of the 12. And the other two, you're thinking, yeah, these other two, I'm going to change them when we are together. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. We have seen people failed to change the other and then they end up in divorce, unfortunately. Because if you think you're going to marry somebody and you're going to change them, unfortunately, newsflash, it doesn't work. You cannot change a person. If you don't like their dressing, you're falling in love with them. At least I think you have. You're falling in love with them. And now tomorrow you start, oh, I don't like the way they dress. I'm going to, unfortunately, no, that doesn't work. Accept them the way they are. So that tip will be followed by accept the things you cannot change which means your part the, you the other half that you marry you know a lot of people say oh you know about a person i i know a couple that went out for 10 years and they got married and within the first year unfortunately they got divorced so the things that you're going to find out when you're married <laughs> News flash. There are things that you're going to be finding out and you'll be like, I didn't know they were like this. I didn't know they do this. I didn't know they snow. I didn't know they are uh, a mouth breather. I didn't know they're this. All these things you didn't know. But maybe at that time, because you're wearing the blue glasses, you know, when you're in love, when they say love is blind, you were wearing those glasses. So even when they did those things, they showed you those things, you chose not to see them because of love. Unfortunately, when you discover them when you're in, in, in the marriage, you have to accept them and accept that you're going to live with them. I'll give an example. I, I talked about um, the clothes. If you don't like the way they dress, if you plan to change the person, or if your plan is, oh, I don't like the way they dress. By accepting what you cannot change, you lessen your expectations. Then you're not expecting too much from the other side. The problem we have is we expect too much. We expect the other person to make us happy. Our happiness is not in them. So by expecting them to be this person unfortunately if we discover tomorrow they are not what we thought they are that's it that will be the end of the, the marriage or that will be the start of the problems so accept what you cannot change which means you you will find out things for example my husband marries me in his world he's surrounded by women cooking and cooking good food and then he discovers, I cannot cook. What he will have to do for this marriage to work out, he will either cook himself and teach me how to cook, not trying to change me, because if I'm watching him what he's cooking, I am learning in love. I'm learning what, what food he likes. I'm learning how to cook good food. But if my in, his intention is, you're going to have to cook for me and you're going to have to cook good food. If I go in the kitchen, I cook food and he looks at the food and the food is, ooh, he, he, he can't even eat it. He doesn't enjoy it. Fine. Maybe at the beginning when you're in the honeymoon period, he's going to eat it and eat it. And then third day, fourth day and a month. And then after the honeymoon period is going to, come to an end at some point and when that honeymoon period is finished he's gonna start telling me off I don't like your food and oh and then the next thing I'll be like 
but you've been eating it and you've been telling me it's nice and all that. This is the thing. So he either accepts I cannot cook. He's going to have to, if he doesn't cook himself, he's going to have to learn how to cook himself. And hoping in the process, whilst he's learning to cook, hoping I will learn to cook as well. But otherwise, then we're going to have to eat what we can cook and leave. We're not going to die as long as we're not making food poison. We're not going to die. And he will have to live with that. The thing is, I always say, there's no perfect person. So if you are thinking, I'm marrying this woman, she's going to cook, and you look at her, she dresses well, she everything is top-notch. And then you're thinking, but she can't cook. Accept that. You're not settling. I know most of the times people are going to say, oh, yeah, yeah, you don't have to... Um, change yourself for the other person and all that you're not changing yourself there are some things that you can do without there are some sacrifices you can do without as long as you're not killing the inner you you can live with some sacrifices that you know you're not gonna die and you know what there are lots of people that started at a position where they th I'll give the cooking one as an example there are people who started together and maybe the wife could not cook good food but after a little while, people have sent their wives for um, cooking lessons. Nowadays, there's YouTube know-how. YouTube will teach you everything. Together, in love, you know, tell each other, you know, let's try to cook this. Let's try to do this. And before you know it, you are all enjoying preparing food nicely. And you haven't lost anything. And you haven't lost your marriage. If anything, you've gained another tip express love affectionate and appreciation to each other this is one of the things that um mostly our african men and african women we struggle to show affectionate we are not we we were raised when we were growing up we would see even your own parents you don't see them kissing. Most most of my African people, you can agree with me. You don't usually see your mom and dad kissing. Nowadays, we see them kissing all the time. But when we were growing up, you don't just see them kissing and all that. But they will be kissing. Doesn't mean they're not kissing. But they're just not... Because they're not showing it where, where in, in front of people or in front of... Um, in public. And then you're thinking, oh... They used to have this thing of if you show a woman you love her so much, yeah, she's going to she's gonna take you for granted. Yeah, there's this thing, she's going to take you for granted. Or if you show the man that, yeah, you're, you're, he's your all in all, he's your everything, then it means he's going to take you for granted. That is so wrong. If he's going to take you for granted, whether you show him or you don't, he's going to take you for granted, unfortunately. You demand how you get to be treated. Which means, if you treat him with respect, if you treat her with respect, and you love them, believe you me, they're going to respect you. So, love. Make sure you are expressing the love for one another. I know somebody's going to say, oh, I've been married 50 years, I've been married, so how can you, what can you teach me about um, showing love for one another? Showing love for one another, it means sacrificial the bible says man love your wife as i've loved the church god died jesus died for the church he died for the church which means man we're expecting you to die for us be ready to die for us how are you dying for us which means you're not you know um there's this saying they say a real woman can do everything but a real man is not gonna let her which means a man who is always ready to do to cover to protect to provide for his wife I please don't get me wrong I'm not saying I need to sit at home so that my husband goes and works and everything but a man who makes sure the wife their home the children are well provided they are well protected a man who makes you know there's um somebody said man man needs respect 
a woman needs protection. So if a woman need, feels protected, loved, covered by her husband, believe you me, man, you will be surprised what you can get out of a marriage. And women, they say a man needs respect. That's all they, they strive for, respect. If you respect them, believe you me, you'll be surprised what you can get out of a marriage. There are things that we think they're old-fashioned. But the truth is, as much as we would want to make them old-fashioned, if they are from the Bible, they are not old-fashioned. The Bible is not old-fashioned. The things that the Bible teaches us to do in a marriage, believe you me, they were... The marriage itself was ordained by God. So he's the owner, the person who started this marriage thing. He's the one who suggested, he's the one who created man and woman so that they can live together. He's the one who is going to tell you how you're going to live together. If you have got a microwave and it's just taken out of the box, if you're not going to read the manual, believe you me, all you're going to use that microwave is to warm food and that's it. If that is, you're going to be able, you might not even be able to know where to press, which buttons to press. Whereas if you read your manual, which is the Bible, if you read your manual, you're going to enjoy loads of things that you're going to use that microwave for. You're going to find out that you can do baking, you can do roasting, there are loads of things that you can do, but you can only find out all those things through reading the manual, which is your Bible. So I'm going to tell you, I know we have been told lots of things. We're living our lives nowadays on fast lane and we're living, you know, the way social media does it. But unfortunately, social media is not there when you are all by yourself in your home when the marriage is ended. I'm not saying if you do it right, the marriages don't end. But... Be in a position where you have done everything humanly possible according to God's instruction on a marriage. So that if anything goes wrong, you stand clear and you can literally say, I, I, I did everything that God wanted me to do about marriage, but it didn't work. And then, you know, it's the Bible says, test and see the Lord is good. So that's where you can stand there and say, God... I did everything you wanted me to do and look at this. But don't be found in a situation or in a position where you can actually say, I could have done better. There's always room for better. I've got a friend who was telling me that um, her mom got divorced. And when she got divorced 10, 15 years down the line, she literally says, when I look back, I cannot tell you the reason of my divorce. I don't even know. I must have been just young and naive. But when I look back, I don't even know the reason of my divorce. Why we got divorced. So, there are lots of marriages that have ended up in divorce that could have been saved. Let's be honest. They could have been saved. But the problem is, we rush. Nowadays, we are living the microwave life where we think, you know what? At, at the first sign of something going wrong, I'm out of here. And you think to yourself, I'm going to find a better man. And then you marry another one. And then unfortunately, they don't, didn't work either. And then you think, oh no. I'll find out, I, I must have got a wrong one. I'll get another one. And then it doesn't work. And then you think, is there something wrong with me? But let's be honest, in the olden days, I know we can say the positives and the negatives about old marriages. In the olden days, our grandparents and all that, they lived together because they believed in fixing things when they are broken. What do we do nowadays, things? When things are broken, I go and buy another thing. So in that same manner of, if it's broken... Just throw it away and go and buy another one. We think a marriage is broken. Let's just go and buy another one. But if we do it the marriage God's way, the chances are it probably is not going to break. It might struggle, but it's not going to break. Which takes me to the next tip. Commit yourself to a long-lasting relationship. 
what is this? When we are getting married, I've had conversation with um, young ones when they're getting married and all that. Literally, you can hear this saying, oh yeah, if he, if he does this, I'm out. If he does this, I'm out. Literally, that marriage, he is going to do, he, he might not do exactly what you're saying, if he does this, I'm out. He might do something else and you will be out. So, if you go in a relationship committed to a long lasting, a forever lasting marriage relationship, believe you me, you are going to work hard for that. I remember having a conversation with my friend years back and I remember saying to her, marriage is hard work. A successful marriage is hard work. And I remember saying, I don't see how you can call a marriage hard work and all that. But the truth is, a successful marriage takes hard work, which means there's going to take a lot of forgiving. And there's going to take a lot of sacrifices. It's going to take a lot of challenges to a point where at some point you're going to feel like this is not worth it. But believe you me, anything that is of value is worth fighting for. Anything that is of value is worth fi worth fighting for. So a marriage, it depends how much you value your marriage. This is the thing with um, people nowadays with social media and all that. The marriages are being run on social media. When you have problems in the house, they go on social media and all that. Marriages are run on threat to a point where a woman is saying to her husband, if, if you do this, I'm out of here. If you do this, I'm out of here. And then the man is saying, yeah, if you don't iron my trousers or if you don't do this, you'll be out of here. If you do this, you, you pack your things and go. That's not a commitment to a relationship. You can't live a life where thinking tomorrow I could be going. This is why we have got people who are living lives that are literally one foot in the house, one foot is out, getting ready to go, getting ready to walk away from a marriage. I'm not saying, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying put up with nonsense. I would never promote that. I'm not saying put up with nonsense just because you don't want, just because you want to be committed to a relationship. That is so wrong. I would never want my child to be in a relationship where I'm looking and I'm thinking, why is, why is she still in this marriage? Why is he still in this marriage? I do not promote anything like that. But there are things, let's be honest with ourselves. There are things that people have ended up divorcing. And when you hear the core of the problem and you think, really? But some of these things, you know what? I, I remember one of my pastors saying, there is no relationship that cannot be solved by two willing people. In most cases, is one person who is willing for this marriage to work and the other person is really just, you know, like digging holes in that boat and another person is literally taking the water out and everything. If that's the type of relationship, then you, you need to seek help, unfortunately. Unless you've given up on the marriage, if you have not given up on the marriage, seek help and solve whatever that problem is. In a marriage, you should never use separation as a threat, as, as a weapon, whereby you think, oh yeah, if you don't... <laughs> There's been an, a, a running joke on um, Facebook that it's been saying, oh, my husband of 20 years has just said to me, he doesn't love me anymore. He wants me gone. And then the husband is saying, I didn't say that. He said, yeah, you did. He said, no, all I said is you cannot buy that 50,000 pounds car because we don't have the money. And he says, yeah, but it's the same thing. Fine, it is a joke. But let's be honest. There's some relationships. There are some things that we think are a reason for divorce. That to be honest, they are not. Even if the aim is not divorce. But their relation, their reason for causing a fight in a marriage. Unfortunately, some of them, when you take a step back and look at them, 
and just try to reason, you will find that there are things that can be solved without fights. There are lots of things that can be solved without having to take it out on Facebook, taking out on Instagram, taking out on all these um, um, social media groups and everything. Please, I've seen people who discuss their partners, their wives and their husbands with um, an outsider. Once you bring a third person in a marriage, believe you me, that marriage is really going to be unsteady. Whatever problem you have in the house, you either solve them, the two of you, or seek help from somebody that you know that they're not going to be telling everybody. And if I, I'll give an example. If I have a problem with my husband, the minute I open my mouth and tell my mom and dad that this is what, unfortunately, if I was, uh, that's a wrong example. If I use my, if I tell my mom and dad, <laughs> they'll think I'm, I'm the one who is, something is wrong with me anyway. But anyway, for example, if you're going to take your problems and go and tell your sisters and brothers and everything, oh, this is what he's doing. The problem is the two of you are going to forgive each other, but those people are not going to forgive. And the problem is they will never be able to move past that. And even if they do try to move past that, it will still affect the relationship. So solve your problems, not by telling everybody out there. Unfortunately, the pastors that we have nowadays, sometimes you tell your pastor and they use it. The next thing is an example on the pulpit. It happens. We've all seen it. For that reason, if you think the pastor is going to be putting your problems on the pulpit, find somebody. There is always somebody. Counseling. If, if you can't find somebody that you can look up to, find counseling. Professional counseling. The only thing is people will tell you what they, their experiences are and what they think marriage should be like. So when you're looking for, we all know where we look for our help. And we know when we are looking for help from that person or that pastor or whoever it is, we know when we're getting um, help from them, what sort of help are we going to get? We all know that. We all know because I remember I've got my, my cousin who is my best friend. She knows when she has a problem, she knows when she phones her mom what she's going to get. And when she phones me, she knows what she's going to get. And when she phones, you know, when you're phoning somebody, even myself, whenever I have a problem, when I phone her, I know what she's going to say. And when I phone my own sisters and my own brothers and all that, I know what I'm going to get. We all know. So depending on what you are after, you know the person you contact for help. But I will say, if you are somebody who knows God, there is no problem that God does not solve. He is the one who instituted marriage and he is the one who is going to solve that problem. If it's a problem about marriage, he's the one who's going to solve. Because I remember somebody saying um, the problem of money is not a marriage problem. When it comes to finances, that goes on under com communication. If financial problems are putting a strain on your marriage this is something that you, yeah you take it to god but communication communication which is another um tip that i'm about to talk about communication there are marriages that have been destroyed and when you look back nine out of ten times it's just broken communication Communicate, communicate, communicate. The problem is your husband, your wife, if you don't take them as your best friend and you have got an outsider best friend, that person is going to know more about your husband or your wife more than the, your, your, your partner themselves. If you have a problem with your husband, communicate and deal with your husband. If you're going to take this problem outside, you're not communicating because 
the ideas that person is going to tell you. This is the thing. If I take my problem to somebody who is not married or somebody who is divorced and I go to find help from them, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying somebody who is divorced cannot help you. Please. That's not what I mean. But I'm saying there are things. Have you, have you ever seen when you hang around the same birds of a feather? Have you ever seen you hang around people who are divorced? You start to see divorce as an option. Even when, before you even had a, a problem in a marriage. And before you know it, you see, because this, you know the, how they say the grass is greener on the other side, but you get there is just as yellow. The truth is, if you have, if you're surrounded, I'm not saying, please, I'm not saying you can't have friends that are divorced. Please, every divorce is good. It's reason. People should not stay in marriages just because they'll be um, blacklisted that they're not good friends. That's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm just saying is, if you are surrounded by people that are divorced, everybody, they will normalize, they will make that divorce. You will get to a point where even a marriage that is not on rocks will end up to be on rocks. And before you know it, you're seeing the people who are divorced, everybody who is divorced as the best thing because you feel like you're restricted in everything. So be very careful where you're getting your help. Be very careful where you're getting your um, counseling from. Because with communication, like I've said, communication, there are loads of things. If anything, if you think of the things that cause divorce in marriage, all of them, com com communication would, would have solved them if there was good communication. Unfortunately, once communication is broken down, the marriage suffers. Let's say my husband cooks and there's too much salt in the food and I just eat it and I'm not even just, just saying it in a nice way. Communication is how you communicate whatever you're feeling, whatever you want to be, to go to the other side to be communicated in a nicest way. Gentle with your words is what you say. It's, it's, it's what is how you say it not necessarily what you're saying. It's what you say that can affect the whole communication. Something that could have been solved nicely if it was said nicely ends up to be a fight. You know, there's a saying, anything that affects their dignity and puts them down, it bounces back. If not transmitted properly, it bounces back. So the person is not going to take what you're trying to communicate, it does not penetrate. It bounces back because whenever I feel like I'm being attacked, I'm not going to take that in, an, in a nice way. And my understanding of everything is I'm being attacked. Whereas if you say the same thing with love, I'll give an example. If somebody's got a big foreign body on their arm, something that is gone in, a sharp um, metal has gone in their arm. If I come and just pull it out without any anesthetic, I could kill them with pain. So the problem with that is, the very thing that is supposed to be helping the person, if done wrongly, it can kill. The same way, communication, the same thing that I'm supposed to help my other half with. If done wrongly, it will destroy them instead of building them. Which means if there is anything that I would like the other side to know, if I say it nicely, believe you me, I'm the one who's going to benefit from that. They will benefit and I'll benefit from it. But if I make them feel like they are in the wrong or they are doing whatever they're doing wrong and it, it, it 
undermines them. Instead of them getting the point, unfortunately, like I said, that it will just repel. Literally, it will just cause a problem. There are lots of problems that have happened because of lack of communication. So I was giving an example. For example, if my husband has made something and there's so much salt in it. If I said to him, oh gosh, gosh, you can't cook. And even anything you cook is just salt. It's just, I can't taste anything in this. It's just salt. Believe you me, tomorrow he's not going to cook for me. Because he's thinking, all right, he says anything I cook. She says anything I cook is just salty I can't cook and all that instead of them getting the point that I was all I was saying is there's too much salt in the food they're going to understand as I'm saying they can't cook so it, for that reason tomorrow they're not going to cook they'll be like you know what you cook because you, you, you said you, you you can cook better I, I, I can't cook this is where whereas if I could have said oh this food is really nice in a nicest way with love communication done with love is amazing so if i said to him food is really nice if only there was a pinch less salt oh wow but oh thank you very much which means i'm saying to him the food is nice everything about it is except for the salt. all i'm trying to say is communication can make or break a marriage in most cases communication makes or breaks marriages which means there are things that women complain about bedrooms I've had I've had conversation with loads of people when I'm speaking to women and helping them and all that there are things that break marriages because there are it's been known or it's been said a lot that there are loads of women who are just offering services to their husbands in the bedroom and they are not giving the service to themselves. The problem with that is nobody knows your body like you. So if there's anything you would like done differently, than the way they are doing it. Communicate. Because things like that, you can't be going outside and telling somebody, oh, my husband is doing this, but I would like them to do that. Tell it to them. But if you tell them nicely, believe you me, you are the one who's gonna benefit. They're going to benefit, you're going to benefit. So make sure you communicate even the things that you think cannot be communicated. Even the things that you think cannot be communicated. Believe you me. If you make your husband your best friend, there isn't anything you can't communicate with them. Your husband, your wife, make them your best friend. If they are not already, make them your best friend. Which means you can say, there are things, you know, I'll give an example. I'm not trying to say, please. I'm not trying to say I've been married for a long time. But sort of I am. I've lived with my husband a lot longer than I've lived with my own parents. So you can imagine. So when I say that, what I'm saying is, if I don't make him my best friend, this is the person that I live with 24-7. Who is going to be my best friend? Who am I going to be telling if I have a problem? Who am I going to... Make your partner, make your husband, make your wife the, the first person you tell the best thing about your life. You tell the worst things about your life, which means if you have got something going on in your self, in your head, at work, anywhere and everywhere, if there is anything that is eating you up, the person to tell is your husband. He should be the first person to know if there's something is wrong with you. He should be the first person to know if there's anything and everything amazing happening in your life. You know how they say a problem shared is half solved? If you have a problem, literally just by them listening, they don't have to... If they can, yeah, they can try to help solve the problem. But if, if it's something that they can't solve, 
just by listening you feel you've told it to your best friend you feel you've offloaded onto your best friend who is gonna be walking that whatever journey with you believe you me that problem is half solved and you'll be surprised how you're gonna feel when the two of you are dealing with whatever the problem is together proverbs 24 verse 3 to 4 i'm just reading the bible i'll say by wisdom a house is built and by understanding it is established by knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches did you hear that and proverbs 4 verse 7 wisdom is supreme why first we need to understand what wisdom is the bible says get knowledge get understanding when you get knowledge and you get understanding and you apply it, that is wisdom. Because there are doctors who know a lot about how bad smoking is, how bad drinking is, how bad um, eating unhealthy is. But that doesn't stop them. You still see them eating and drinking and smoking and everything. That's lack of wisdom. They've got the knowledge, but they're not applying it. So by having knowledge and applying it, that's wisdom. Why, why am I talking about wisdom? Marriage is run with wisdom. You can only run a marriage with wisdom. If you are going to think I'm going to have a marriage based on what I'm seeing on social media, how people are running the the way we see marriage on um, um, on TV. Gosh, the marriage was on TV. They're either the worst or the best. The thing is, that's acting. The reality is different. However, marriage is one of the best things if done well. Marriage should be enjoyed, guys. There are people, I remember there was an, a meeting that I attended and I had few women telling the young ones before they got married. And this one was saying, oh, marriage is this, marriage is that. I thought, ladies, stop. You are making these young ones think marriage is bad. Marriage, if done well, if done God's way, marriage is amazing. You will enjoy your marriage if you do it God's way. If you don't believe in God, unfortunately, you're going to do it the world's way. So, and, and that's, we, we, we see loads of results of that. But if you do it God's way, you are going to enjoy it. And you, marriage is amazing. If done very well. And it's, if done God's way, according to the topic, marriage as God intended. God intended. He's the, he made all the, he put all the instructions in the Bible on how we should run a marriage. And if we are going to run it that way, which means, how are we running this marriage? We've got a triangle. So on the top, that's God. There, my husband. There, myself. If we are having this marriage, and then our children come in between. But, if our if my marriage is god centered it does not guarantee i'm not going to have problems in the marriage but what it guarantees is whenever i have problems i know who to run to god himself i'm telling so if i have a relationship with god even before the problems get so big god is already talking to me how to deal with it I remember having a friend years ago. She was praying for her husband, wanting to get married and all that. And at some point, we we're just sitting, talking in my house. We we're just um, having, we we're just talking. And I remember her saying, oh, I can't live with a person. I like to live my, by myself. And I had to say to her, stop. You're saying you can't live. You do know we're praying for a husband. And you do know... A man 
a husband is a man that's a person. Oh, yeah, but when it's my husband, it's different. I said, the thing is, we are snared by our words. We need to think our reasons for getting married. And we need to see and examine ourselves if we are ready for a marriage. And if we feel we are ready for a marriage, we have studied, we have got knowledge, we have got, wis we have got understanding and ready to apply that wisdom onto that marriage, believe you me, we are going to enjoy the marriage, a lasting marriage of which God says, till death do us part, which means you'll be separated by death. So another tip, commit yourself to God. So this tarries with exactly what I was just talking about before. Like I said, um, if, your marriage is God-centered. You're going to enjoy your marriage. And everything that you do will be what God intended for a marriage. Nothing outside of marriage. Talking from my own experience, I don't believe men and women can be best friends if one person, if one of those person is in a relationship. I'll give an example. If I am married, I cannot have a man as a best friend or as a friend, as a friend, which means I've heard somebody say, and it's true. I believe it's true. If you are in a relationship as friends, one of the two is lying to the other. When we are in a relationship, which means You've got a wife, you've got a husband. We need to be careful the friends we have outside the marriages. They can make or break a marriage. So be very, very careful. Not everyone is in that relationship for the reasons that you think they are. So be very careful when you're making friends with people of the opposite sex because some of them could be just waiting for that day that you're vulnerable and they're ready to pounce and before you know it you're finding yourself thinking the things that you shouldn't think which means you jeopardize your marriage you can put your marriage on the rocks just because you're maintaining friendship with people of the opposite sex. When I talked about communication, women, we tend to have a weakness in somebody telling us nice things. Tell your husband to be telling you those nice things. If there's anything you would like to hear from a man, he was telling you when you, before you get married, so why should he stop now? If he stopped, ask him, why is he not telling you that? The woman, you remember on one of the tips when I talked about um, show aff affectionate uh, appreciation, which means appreciate your husband, appreciate your wife. There are things that we tend to take for granted. The same way sometimes we forget to thank God for what we think are small things until those things are, take, are taken away from us, then we realize they were actually big things. The same thing with a marriage. If you don't appreciate your husband, you will realize that all the things that you forgot to appreciate them for, they were actually big things. When he's done something, thank him, appreciate him. Praise him if he's doing good things. We have got a problem of thinking he is supposed to do it. It's his job and all that. In my house, we, we've we just trained um, children to uh, thank for food. I mean, not giving grace as in after food to think, oh, thanks. If mom, if mom prepares food, they need to learn to say, oh, thanks, mom, for the food. It was nice. Thanks, dad, for the food. Same thing. 
the same thing, everything that your husband does. If your husband does something, if your wife does something that is even expected of them, they are expected to cook for you. They are expected to iron for you and all that. But when they do those things, appreciate them. You will be surprised. There will be more where that came from. Normally, as human beings, we thrive on when somebody um, says nice things to us. For example, if you give somebody, if you make somebody a cup of tea and literally they thank you like you've literally gone out of your way to do something. You, you literally look, what, what else can I do for this person? You want to do more for them. So when somebody is grateful, you want to do the same way we are to God. When we are grateful to God, believe you me, we get more blessings for everything that we think is small. We are, when we are grateful, we get more. The same way to, the, to your other half, to your husband, to your wife. When you are grateful, you get more. So learn to appreciate. We tend to magnify when they have done something wrong. You have done this, you have done this and all that. You know, the Bible says love covers a multitude of sin. Love does not keep record of wrongs. You know? You get to a point where you're thinking, hey, yeah, last year you did this. You know, five years ago that year you did this. You, No, you don't keep records. You, you've got records of the wrong things they've done. Have you got records for the, of the good things they've done? So, if you are in this marriage committed for it to last forever, you're not going to keep records of the wrongs. Because if you're keeping records of wrong things, you are standing on a pulpit saying you are standing right. It means you don't do anything wrong. Because if you're going to keep records of the other person doing something wrong, you should keep records of you doing wrong as well. So there's no way you're going to be having a marriage thinking only the other person does wrong and you're not doing anything wrong. That is wrong because you both at some point are going to wrong the other person and forgiving is the glue of the marriage communication forgiveness because at some point they're going to do something and that you're thinking oh my goodness how dare you did this and all that communicate deal with it forgive and forget leave it in the past don't keep bringing it up if god kept all the records of the things we have done wrong, even when we have apologized, we have repented. And God is saying, oh, but you do know last year you did this, you do know. We, we, we wouldn't be standing. We wouldn't be where we are. So for that reason, if God compared his love for us to the same one as the one in the marriage, let's thrive to do the same, which means even when it's wrong, we on marriage, isn't we say, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, which means there's going to be time in, 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 in the marriage where things are going to get really difficult. There's going to be sickness. There's going to be financial problems. But if at the first sign of those things, we think, yeah, this is not working. I'm out of here. Unfortunately, we're going to end up getting married about 10, 15 times because problems are part of life, which means whatever you, when, what you run away from one marriage, you go to another. Unfortunately, you're going to face the same thing and... If you don't know how to deal with it, you won't be able to deal with it. So when we say get understanding, get knowledge, and apply it, which is wisdom. When we get understanding and apply, which is wisdom, we will understand how to live with a human being which means we will understand a woman, we will understand a man, 
we will understand children. We will learn how to handle emotions. You know, some of the things that are messing up marriages is failure to control your emotions, be it emotions that are bad or good, lasting for something that is outside that looks like it's better than what you have. Having self-control on yourself as a human being will save a lot of heartache. So this video has been very long. So in short, with everything that I've discussed about communication, forgiveness, commitment, sacrifice, love, and being ready to face the changes that come with the marriage. We will enjoy what marriage. God intended for us to enjoy this thing called marriage. You know, as you know, being the first institution that God made, it is something that he made because he wanted us to enjoy it. But we are failing to enjoy it because we are doing it our way. If we do it God's way, we are going to enjoy it. What we forget about marriage is the way we are doing our marriage, our children are watching and learning. And if they see mom and dad who are together, as in they have got togetherness that even when problems come, they face them together as a team. The children are going to learn to value marriage. Unfortunately, life is like a vicious circle. When I'm raising my children and they're seeing how their dad treats me, it teaches them, for example, I've got a daughter, it teaches my daughter what to expect from a man and it teaches my sons how to treat a woman and same way the way i treat their dad teaches them what to expect from the other side so whatever we're doing we should always be mindful that we are teaching our children without having to sit down and tell them this is what you do they are learning from what they are seeing. So, you know, they usually say children and a marriage, they're like flowers. like They're like a garden of flowers. They'll reflect everything that they're getting. Which means if I'm working well on my marriage without even having to teach my children, they learn a lot from just seeing us which is why don't get me wrong I'm not trying to sound judgmental they are children that are out taking drugs and doing in the streets living life in the streets most of them you will find it's not just about poverty some of them yes but some of them it's not because of, of poverty but it's just because they're coming from a home that is broken. So if I'm living my own life, but I'm living with my husband, but I'm living my own life and my husband is living his own life and all that, believe you me, the people who suffer in that are the children. And you know what? Their way of dealing with it, they take it out to the street and then they go and live their lives in the streets. They're doing drugs and everything. I'm not saying children who are coming from a well-together family don't do these things. Unfortunately, sometimes they do. But rarely do you see kids who are coming from a well-standing home. Because I don't want you to say um, or to understand me like I'm saying 
when kids are coming from a broken family, it means they are going to be broken. That's not what I'm saying. But unfortunately, in most cases, when the families are broken, we break the children as well. So if you take anything today, take the fact that a marriage was meant to be enjoyed. There's no marriage in heaven. Marriage is down here on earth. So you get into that marriage, enjoy it, do what God expects you to do towards that marriage and enjoy the fruits of it. And may I also add, play together. This means take some time from the business of the world, from work, from everything that keeps you busy. In these days, we are always busy. Learn to take some time off where it will be just you, your wife, children, and just have time together where you continue. I know you bond in the house, but just time away from home. It doesn't have to be an expensive holiday. Anything that's going to take the family away from the business of every day and just love on each other, pay attention to each other and remind each other what it is like to be a family and just enjoy. Pray together. They say a family that prays together stays together. So teach children to pray. Teach children God. Let them know God for themselves and learn to pray together as a family. On top of this, the two of you as a couple, learn to take some time off from family, from the children, from everybody. At least, they normally say at least twice a year. If you can do it more, even better. Where you have just time for the two of you, reminding each other what it is to be just you as a lover, you as the, the other half, not just as so-and-so's mom or so-and-so's dad, but just being the two of yous, paying attention to each other and forgetting everything else about the world, about life, about everything, and just loving on each other. Every now and then, when you do this more often, you remind each other what it was like, why you fell in love in the first place. It's really a good idea. So I would actually advise that you do this quite often. Thank you. So please like, comment, share, and please tell me what you think I've forgotten I could have added or what you think I added and you didn't like, I don't mind. If you say it nicely, like we have said, constructive ideas, really good. Constructive criticism, really good. So yeah, if there's anything that I've said that you think, oh no, I don't think this works. Yeah. Just so to add to this, like I've said, the things that I've said, this is my personal experience and this is how I see things. However, it doesn't mean everything that I've said would work for you. What works for one marriage may not work for the other. But if your intention is to work hard towards the best result of your marriage, believe you me, it will work out because God sees it all. It's the intentions of your doing things. What motivates you to do things? The things that you do for your other half. They say it's not about marrying the right person. It's about being the right partner in the marriage. You do your bit with the hope that the other side is going to do their bit as well. And see what comes out of it. Thank you very much for watching. I know the video has been very long. Take care. God bless and I'll see you in the next video.